the discovery of Australia's largest dinosaur species, a thing that we named Australotitan cooperensis, which simply means uh, the southern titan from Cooper country. So this gigantic sauropod plant-eating dinosaur was, uh, was discovered back in 2007 and it's taken that many years to slowly prepare away all of the bones, well, the big bones, they're enormous bones of this animal. And, uh, and the study systematically went through and looked at all of those specimens and compared them to other fossils from other dinosaurs in Australia and around the world. And we, we realized, yes, not only did we have a, a new species, but we had Australia's largest. So that was really exciting and an exciting moment for us. And my name is Dr. Scott Hocknell. I'm the Senior Curator of Geosciences at the Queensland Museum. Well, the study took something like 17 years to come to fruition. So it's been a labor, labor of love for all of us, the authors of the paper. Uh, this species, Australotitan, which is another long-necked dinosaur, is probably in the order of 25 to 30 meters long, uh, maybe six and a half meters high at the hip. And we have, we, it's very difficult to estimate body size based on the, f the few bones that we have, but it's probably in the order of 67 tonnes, uh, perhaps somewhere between 30 tonnes and 70 tonnes, depending on which equation you use and how much of a neck it had and how much of a tail it had. But either way, it doesn't really matter. It's still huge. And uh, the exciting thing for Australia is that it's the first sort of first hat in the ring for the, for the world's largest animals. So for Australia, it's the, the largest beast to walk our outback. And that's really exciting to, to finally see this animal come to scientific fruition. But one of the parts of the research that I'm most proud of is that we're able to bring together digital models and 3D models of these gigantic bones. Uh, one of the biggest and the hardest processes that we have in scientific study is in fact looking at huge dinosaur bones and comparing them to other huge dinosaur bones where you can't just simply take them in your back pocket and compare them together. So digitizing them in these 3D models and sharing them with the world allows us literally to take, you know, a thousand kilos of dinosaur bones in a seven kilo laptop, drag it around wherever I go and look at them on the screen and actually for the first time compare these fossils together. And that's really exciting. And, and therefore, what it means is that everyone in the community, whether they're paleontologists that study dinosaurs or researchers that work on 3D models, can get something out of it. The other parts of the study was a very detailed look at the geological horizons that these dinosaurs lived in. And unfortunately, Australia is a very flat continent. We don't have nice big mountain ranges like South America, North America, where you could find a dinosaur at the peak of a mountain and follow the layer across and know that this one was younger than this one and so on and so forth. In Australia, all the dinosaur bones are well and truly underneath the ground. So we actually have to use oil and gas drill cores, seismic lines that have creeped so we can see underneath the ground to try and map between one dinosaur location and another. So of course we can't afford to do all of that. So we have to bring in all this other data to try and figure out where in the scheme of things they fit. So we estimate that it's probably in the order of 96 to 92 million years old, but we don't know for sure. And that's one of the things we present in the paper is to go, we think it's in this time zone, but we need a lot more work to really figure out exactly where in the sequence Australotitan lives in, re re in relation to the other Winton formation dinosaurs like Diamantinosaurus or Wintonotitan, all these big long necked dinosaurs, Savannosaurus. There's, bit, lot, there's a number of them being found and named, but maybe they all lived in different geological time frames. Maybe they all lived at the same time. But one of the conclusions of the paper is that in fact, we don't know whether they actually even lived together in the same place at the same time. So maybe one evolved into the other through time, or maybe they lived in different ecosystems and never came together in the same place. So there's a lot of questions, obviously with most science like paleontology offers up more questions than answers. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun and exciting uh, task. Well, I got on the PJ wagon pretty early on. I, 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 I uh, subscribed as a, as a full member right at the beginning because I truly believe in what the, what, what the, the goal of the uh, journal is, and that's to get science out rapidly and, and open access. So uh, it was great to finally get a big journal publication together. I've been part of uh, co-authorships of other papers that have gone through PJ and those experiences led me to go, yep, PJ seems to be a great way to, to go with that. The fact that you're also creating an opportunity for people to link to the 3D assets and really just 
promoting the fact that really everyone needs to be open about their science and not cagey about it. I, I really uh, subscribe to. So it's been a great, a great process and uh, yeah, I hope to publish more in the future. So uh, publishing in PJ and publishing open access allows us to get to those people that have really dedicated their lives for free for natural history and for science. And I think that is a fundamentally important part of what open access is all about. And, and we can then enjoy and celebrate this amazing discovery, not only with the scientific community, but more importantly, to, from my perspective, all those people who have dedicated literally years, decades even sometimes, of their, of their lives and volunteer work to help us translate something that was in the ground to something that was scientific. And yeah, I'm just the sort of the, the tip of the iceberg of all of the people that have actually made all this come to, to fruition.